Hey guys, welcome to the tutorial about the Pawn VR. Most of the things we have already talked about in the non VR Pawn tutorial. So let's focus on some more aspects here because the VR Pawn can spawn pellets like the radial menu or the object dropper and it will also need to get the information somewhere. So we will have a look at those. And of course the VR Pawn has some different components for controlling teleportation or the key mapping of the VR controllers. So I'm also going to show you how you can integrate those. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Hey guys, congratulations on finishing the non-VR setup. Today we are going to have a look at the VR pawn. So we will start similar to what we did last time. I open up the info level file and search for the pawn we are currently using in this level. In this case, we are going to have a look at the VR pawn. Here you can see it's a child of the BP pawn VR normal. And this time I'm not duplicating one, I'm creating a child blueprint from scratch, but it's the same like I did last time. I'm going to name it tutorial and move it into the folder our other example pawns are located in just to keep things clear here. Let's move it there. Make sure to actually move it and not copy it over. And now I'm able to open it up. And here is my non-VR pawn and my VR pawn. All the things we discussed for the non-VR pawn are still valid here. Of course the VR pawn works a little different, but for modifications of the appearance you can just do the same procedures, so I'm not talking too much about this. Character movement is only relevant if you want to move in a fluid way, but of course for teleportation or things um, this will not apply here. Let's start off by adding a new component here. Similar to the non-VR pawn, most of the components have something to do with the UI. In this case we have three different ones we will have a look at. And of course we have a motion controller in the VR pawn. So the settings are also inside a component now. We have a look at those later. Let's start off with the sim most simplest one, the display. First of all we can define some display categories. So let's go with the achievements here. maybe the character one. So here you can basically add all the displays you want to display in your, well, display. It's the one we showcase in our action map. So in order for the display to actually work, we will need to change the left or the right controller. You can do this inside the component controller VR. Here are all the settings for your left controller, for your right controller, your controller mesh override if you want to um, display a specific controller. And we also have integrated new data assets. We will come back to those later. But in the data assets, we have a default one and we have one for every um, hardware. So for the Steam, we have one for Oculus or for Mixed Reality, things like this. I opened them up and duplicated one of those. So let's go with the Oculus preset here because I'm using the Oculus Quest. And let's name it Oculus Tutorial. Make sure to use it in the default preset and also here in the Oculus Motion Controller one. And now if I open it up, inside here I can define all my key bindings and things like trigger grip or holding grip. This is very similar to the way we did it earlier, but in a much cleaner approach. So everything is in this data asset now. And this also gives us the possibilities to create presets for all of you guys. So let's go in there and delete all of the preset things here and start off from scratch. So right now nothing will happen with my controller because nothing is set here. Let's create a very basic key mapping for our right hand. So I go with select crap and the display because this is the one we want to demonstrate here right now. So let's set it to phase one. Also make sure that you are using the pawn. So in your info level, make sure to use the pawn we just created. In this case, the VR normal 
tutorial and make sure that my right controller is the one with the watch. Otherwise I will not be able to show the display. You can see this is also working already. There's my display, I can open it up and we have our three categories we assigned earlier. Also my left hand is not doing anything right now. We don't have any mapping for it. So all of that is working the way it should be. I'm not able to crap it with the left hand, but I'm able to crap it with the right hand because I assigned the crap functionality. So this is working perfectly. And we can continue. If we remove one, for example, the inventory, just to show you, now we only have these two displays here. And this way you can have a very specific approach how you can display data to the user. The next one will be our radial menu. And you have two presets for radial menus, the radial menu zero and the radial menu two. Of course, you can add more if you want to. Let's add two buttons to our example radial menu here. So I go with bookmarks and objects. The next thing is to make sure that we have a button assigned to trigger the radial menu. I go with my left hand and select the radial menu one here. I'm also going to reassign the other one for selecting crap. And now if I press face button one with my left hand, the radial menu is opening and you can see the two buttons I have chosen appeared here. I can select both of them. And if I open one up, you can see there are no bookmarks in here. The reason for that is the player spawned it and we haven't defined any values what he can actually spawn. The same is true for the object dropper. So this is an important concept. Let's add a component UI palette. And inside here you can define, for example, the bookmarks. So every time the player spawns something that can display bookmarks, this is the place where the information is defined. So let's add some bookmarks. I go with three of them. And if I open it up now, you can see here are my three bookmarks. I can select them, I can spawn them, I can grab them, and they work the way they should be. So again, everything you spawn needs to get information. And for the player, this is the place where you can define this information. Let's do the same for our object dropper. We have a data asset list and inside this data asset list we already prepared like 48 different data assets. These are actually the things you need to spawn an object. I also went in there and set available categories. So for example, let's go with construction and add another one. And don't worry, we will cover data assets in a later tutorial in more detail. This is just a very, very basic approach here. And now if I open the object dropper, you can see I have my construction and I have my light categories. I can click on each of them and I have my subcategories. For something like the object dropper in the current setting, I would use laser not the hands but of course you can all change this to your own likings and what your project actually needs it's just a matter of personal likings here so you can see for the light i haven't chosen a picture that's the reason it is blank and i can also spawn fully functional blueprint objects like this lamp here So I think for demonstration purposes, this is working. The other thing you see that there's a palette in there and the palette is not spawned by the character. So it needs also to have a component. In this case, the component UI palette and it gets its information from this palette menu. So back to normal. Let's talk a little bit more about the component controller. In the haptics category, you may be familiar from the earlier version, you can just turn on and off the haptics. You can change the different teleportation modes here. They are valid for the whole character. 
The next one is our movement options, here you can define all the different movements. And of course if we want to use the fluid movement we need to assign a button to this. So let's use face button 2 for the walk option and now if I hit it inside the editor you can see there's my ghost and it's moving according to this to the settings I have set in the component for my, for my movement. The last one is our rotation settings. We have the rotation decrease and let's assign a new key input for turning left and right. So I added a new one, select the th thumbstick left and one for the thumbstick right. And I want to turn left and turn right accordingly. So let's hit save. And now if I press it, you can see the character is rotating. And if I increase the decrease here, you will see I'm now rotating in 90 degrees. So this is all you need to know to get started creating your own pawns and settings. See you in the next tutorial and thanks for watching.